All right, you'll find the scripture tonight in Revelation chapter number 4. The Bible says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. The first voice which I heard was, as it were, the trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, one set on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper, sardine in stone. There was a rainbow round about the throne in sight, like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. They had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne, and out of the throne proceeding lightnings and thunderings and voices. There were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like in the crystal, in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Four beasts had each of them six wings about him. They were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. That's a good place for an amen. amen. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and the twenty elders fall down before him. <laughs> that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, <laughs> This gets to me every time. <laughs> they are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for that has created all things for. And for thy pleasure, they are and were created. Thank you. You can be seen. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, you help me now, I pray. Been nervous today, Lord, for some reason. Lord, I'm just talking to you. Not really praying, just talking to you. Lord, I've been nervous. And uh, uh, just pray you help me. I need you. Every time I stand to preach, I need you. Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, I want to always be sensitive to your spirit. And Lord, I don't want to do things my way or all wrong. Lord, help me to never say anything that they want to say. Lord, as to offend your people. Lord, I would never want to purposely be belligerent or a burden. Lord, I would always want to do my best to be a blessing. So, Lord, I pray that you'd help me to say everything you want me to say. Then, Lord, I'd be silent where you're silent. I wouldn't say anything. I always want to speak where the Bible speaks, and I want to be quiet when the Bible's quiet. And, Lord, I pray that you would ask me look once again into this pre precious, wonderful book of Revelation, Revelation of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you help us. Lord, speak to us on the inside. Lord, as I do my best to speak to us on the outside. And the Lord will praise you and give you glory for what's accomplished won't be anything I've done. It would be all because of what you do. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm still emotional from Sunday. Praise the Lord. I've cried all week long. That's all right. I like to cry. It gets all the rottenness out, I guess, if you cry. And I sure don't want to be rotten. Uh, we've already, uh, uh, we've kind of, we've just been all over the place in Revelation. And in dealing with the last days, uh, I preached a couple of months back. I, I remember Brother Russell coming and singing for us a little bit on that Sunday morning. And I preached uh, out of one little thought, uh, if I can find it again, in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 3, at the last part it says, For the time is at hand. And I said I'd preach a thought or a series of messages of... Uh, for the 
time is at hand. And I preached about the last days and perilous times. Then later on that night I preached about the rapture of the church and the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then somewhere along the way we've preached about, uh, did my best to preach about uh, the new glorified body and what it would be like when we got to heaven. And of course there's no way we can really know. We know a little bit because the Word of God tells us. But uh, we can speculate and think and like to imagine. But I uh, preached a little bit about the new glorified body. And when one day we get to lay this sort of Adam nature down this flesh, it messes up every day. And uh, we'll be perfect like Christ Jesus our Lord. I say hallelujah. Then we've preached about some of the churches uh, along the way. But tonight, I want to preach out of Revelation chapter number 4. And we're just going to go right along together. There at verse 1, I believe this is kind of a picture of the rapture of the church. Now, uh, the word rapture never shows up in the Word of God. But it means to be caught up, to be uh, catched away. And that's what's going to take place. One day Jesus is coming back. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, at verse 13 through 18, He says Jesus is going to come back with the shout of the voice of uh, the shout of the voice of God, the trump of God, and He's coming back, and the church is going to fly away. You've heard me say this, and we're going to leave like uh, Superman, come back like the Long Ranger. I like that. And the Bible says, after this, I looked, and behold, the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now I'm sure at one time we've all wondered what is it going to be like when we get to heaven? What are we going to see? What are we going to experience? What are we going to do? What's going to go on? Are we going to talk with one another? Are we going to worship? Are we going to sing? Will we eat in heaven? Will we work in heaven? Will we wear clothes in heaven? I mean, there's been all kinds of different thoughts that I've thought from the time I was just a young boy up to right now. But the Bible gives us a little bit of an insight of what is taking place right now as I preach and what will take place throughout eternity. Now, let me go ahead and read a little bit of that scripture, seeing how I couldn't quote it right tonight. And that happens sometimes. First Thessalonians 4, the Bible says, verse 16, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together uh, to meet the Lord of the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to give you a little bit of comfort tonight, beloved. He is a coming. Uh, some people were looking for him on the 21st. And some got downhearted because he didn't show up. And then some said, well, we got a little downhearted when Harold Camping kind of prophesied at Jesus. Well, I'm telling you, Harold Camping don't know anything. He doesn't really know. I'm not saying he ain't a good man or what have you. 
frankenstorm is the wrath of God. And tornadoes are the wrath of God. And hurricanes are the wrath of God. I'm telling you to those that believe that, that these, uh, these things that take place in the atmosphere are the wrath of God, they've never seen the wrath of God. That's going to be poured out in the last days. Amen. I'm glad I won't be here. Amen. Amen. Now the Bible says, After this I looked, behold, the door was open in heaven. The first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. So, while things are taking place on this earth for seven years, there will be things taking place in heaven for seven years. And then the Bible says, I was in the Spirit, and behold, now when I come across this, I underline these next four words, and I've read it time and time and time and time again, but this just blessed my heart like it has it before. The Bible says a throne was set. A throne was set. It means that it has been set in its place. When you look at how it is in the Greek and how it is translated, it means to be set in place and never, ever to be removed. You know the kingdoms of this world fall and nations can fall economically and all kinds of different ways, but I Red. 
cannot be made the righteousness of God. In him was no sin, there was no guile found. But then the sardine stone, the stone being red can represent the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so then I got to study about this. The Jasper stone is the first stone on the breastplate of the high priest. Do you remember that? And the starting stone is the last stone on the breastplate. And the Jasper stone represents Reuben, and the starting stone represents Benjamin. Now, Reuben's name means a son shall come forth. Well, the Bible says that he shall be called, that Jesus shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. He will be Jesus, our Savior, because he'll save the world.
fulfilling the promise and the request and the prayer. Now, 12 represent Old Testament saints. Then you've got 12 that represent those in the church age. And they're sitting, they're finding rest. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about the day when we'll enter into rest. It seems like sometimes there's no rest for our mind. And there's no rest for our body. And it seems like there's no rest for the soul. But praise God, one day there'll be eternal rest in heaven. And I'm telling you, I'm looking forward to that day. When I can find peace and rest. Men of God, I've had one of those days as a preacher where I could want to find rest. It's just been one of them days. And we all have a one of them days. And then the Bible says they were clothed in white raiment. They had on their heads crowns of gold. This would be the Stephanos crown. There's five crowns which children of God can receive. Like the victor's crown. It would be like those who roll in time that after winning at a Grecian game would receive one of the victor's crown. It's not the crown of diving. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ had. But here's these 24 elders that have got a crown. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, at verse 6, Paul said, I'm ready to be offered. The time of my departure is ahead. I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I kept the faith. Henceforth, there was laid for me a crown of righteousness. He said that the Lord himself, the judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but all those of his appearance. And so, here are 24 elders with white raiments, saints of God, and a, and a robe of white, and crowns on their head. So we see the saints, but then we hear the sounds, the Bible says. And out of the throne proceeding lightnings and thunders and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are seven spirits of God. Now I'm not going to say that we're going to be able to see the fire and the wrath and the judgment of God fall on the people of this earth. I'm not going to say that. But I tell you, we're going to be in the presence of God. We're going to be praising God, worshiping God. And I believe with all my heart, I'm not going to say that once it goes through the atmosphere that what we're going to see and what we're not going to see. I don't know. I can't, I have no, I, I, just, I can't tell you because I don't know. But I'm going to tell you that we will see God like we've never seen Him before. Amen. See, we're first going to see Him in one way, but then we quickly going to see Him in another way. And I can't help but think the reason, Sister Teresa, that they begin to praise Him. Now this is just me. You think what you want. But I believe that the reason, one reason I'm going to praise Him is I sure am going to be glad if I've got my memory up there that I'm not one that's getting the wrath and the judgment poured out on me. I mean, hey, that would give me something to praise Him for. That would, hey, if we ain't never praise Him, if we ain't never with, with those vows and the wrath of God and the seals are broken, when those horses begin to ride, I'm telling you, we're going to be so thankful that we've been removed from the wrath that is to come. And so we see these sounds and we see these sights and we see these saints and we see these scenes. But then the Bible says before the throne, there was a sea of glass like in the crystal. This would be brazen glass bronze and it represents the labor just like the labor in the tabernacle and in the temple. You all remember before before the high priest could ever go before the Lord he had to get cleaned up at the labor. I believe this will remind us that we had to get cleaned up before we could get his presence. And you know what we really we come before a fountain every day. Brother Jack I do. I come before the fountain that's spoken of in 1 John 1, 9. If we see Him. If we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now I'm not saying that I go through life, that I wake up in the morning. You know the Bible says if we willfully sin, there remains no more sacrifice. I'm not saying, I, I believe that means that if we say, well Lord, I know it's wrong to drink, but I'm going to go drink and then I'll ask for forgiveness. Or Lord, I'm going to go do this no, that sin's on him. This has to premeditate. We've already thought about that. But I'm talking about the things that we do that we don't realize. I'm talking about when 
about done. I see a glass like in the crystal in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. The first beast like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third beast like a man, the fourth one like an eagle. So many different opinions. Some say, well, you know, Matthew, the son of his heart. And Matthew, Jesus is the king. And Mark, he's a servant. You don't, you don't see anything about his birth. He's, it's not recorded. He came as a servant in Mark. And Luke, we see him as the son of man. But then in John, we see him as the son of God. So in Matthew, he's the king. In Mark, he's a servant. In Luke, he's the son of man. In John, he's the son of God. The lion, the king of the jungle. The calf, little innocent lamb. It's not calf like a boy, like a little baby. It's a lamb. It's, it's, a, it's a servant. He came as a sacrifice. Then they'll say, the man, he came as the son of man. But then also, as an eagle, the son of God. But then some people believe that it's literal. There's the beast of the field. There, there he is. Uh, there's the fowl of the air. There's man. Me, everything that was created, all the animals in the sea, in the fields, in the air, all, all animals, all, all people were created. What were we created? To praise the Lord. That's what we're created. So, for what? It, it could be a lion. It could be a lamb. It could be an eagle. And men there, all praising the Lord. The Bible says that the trees of the fields will clap their hands. You remember Luke 19? He said, if these cease to pray, the rocks will cry. Everything's going to praise the Lord. I, I wonder if when we get to heaven, if we'll hear the saints of God singing. I wonder if the animals will be praying. I, I'm anxious to see. Who knows? It might be like that one. It might be like that one Disney cartoon, Lion King, or whatever. Is that what it's called, Lion King? A coon on my where they, that monkey goes and lifts that little old lion up and, and you start hearing all the uh, 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 atmosphere singing. I don't know what's going on, but I'm telling you, hey, a lion and a lamb, the Bible says, will lay down the devil. Don't be little children be able to pick up serpents and play with it. I'm talking about as Elvis Presley sings, amen, don't be peace in the valley. Don't be peace in the valley. So all these saints and all these scenes, they're praising the Lord. And then it says, and we see the span of their praise. The four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and, and said, they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, is, and is to come. These, these creatures, these beings, these saints right now are praising God in heaven. And they don't sleep and they don't rest. Day and night they're praising the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Preacher, what we get tired Listen, I get tired of preaching. When I get done preaching and I get done shaking hands, I like for little Donnie to drive me to a drive through somewhere and pick us up some food. And then I like to go home and I like to do a little upholstery work. Go home and cover a couch. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> and I like to go home and eat. We get the girls down and it's, it's just a given. If I have to lay down with Abby or Ashley, you know, they'll say, scratch my back, Daddy. Pick my hair, Daddy. Uh, Daddy, pick sing to me. Help me go to sleep. And if I, it's, I'm out. If I lay down with them, I, I'm out. There's no hope. If Don says, I'm going to get the girls to let you rest, if, I, if there's something in that recliner, it's special. I don't know if there's some kind of, if they spray something on it before you leave the store with it. But Sister Joe it to give it. If I sit down in that recliner and pull on that lever and my feet go popping up and my back goes, it's, yeah, it's over. There's no hope. And, and, we got to rest. Get tired of preaching. Be out. You, you get out of the work. You, you work all day. You tend to the children. Laundry and dishes and supper and putting up the bosses and all the, and family. All this stuff. You get tired. You ready to, you ready to, hey, ladies, you go home, put something in the bathtub. Calcon, take me away. 
can find rest tonight. Don't, don't. Now, Nathan, you patient before you can't sleep? But Nathan, let me give you some of these night foods. <laughs> we took the teens out on Saturday and, and, and Taz, right before we left, he ran over there with some cough syrup. He said, Preacher, just in case Jared needs this. And I says, Has he been sick, brother, coughing? He said, You all may need this. <laughs> And Sister Stacy, before we got home, we said, Jerry, your mama wants you to take some of this. <laughs> he took two doses. And she said he slept good once he got home. I said, we should have given it to him But we had a good time. But we got to have rest. But when we get to heaven, we won't need rest. We gonna, yeah, we'll have rest from our labors and rest from our problems. And we'll have peace. But we won't need to sleep. We won't ever get tired. Now, can I be honest with you tonight and I'm finished? Can I be honest? I'm not going to give you my last three points because I just want to say this. I want to see the Lord so bad. I want to get to heaven so bad. I just can't wait to get there. How many is with me? How many is ready to go to heaven? How many is ready to see the Savior? We, we are so anxious, so ready, so wanting to go. I believe when we get there, we're going to say, I've waited so long. I've prayed so many times. I've sung so many songs about this place. I've heard so many sermons about this place. I've read books on this place. I've got people in this place. But you're the one I come to see in this place. You created, you, you came from this place. You created us a place in this place. You brought us to this place. I'm standing in this place. I'm going to worship you in this place. And so I believe we're so anxious and so ready and have the world to about us to get there. I believe when we get there, we ain't going to want to leave. Amen. Brother R.L. Brother Ernie DePue and another dear brother, Brother Wisdom, Woody Wisdom, but went to see Dave Lynn, over in Rutherford, spent a couple hours with him fellowshipping. He's got cancer. He told R.L. and me before the, we left. He said his daughter asked him, he said, is there anything you'd like to do that before pass away? He said, I always wanted to see the Grand King. And he said, I wanted to go see. I wanted to walk where Jesus walked. I wanted to go to the Holy Lands. He said, but in just a little bit of time, he said, I'll be walking with you. Ladies, ready to go. Have you ever fellowship with some? You know, we'll, we'll have some church functions here. We'll get together and fellowship with the brothers and sisters. Sometimes you just hate to see it in. You have such a good time, you hate to see it in. Man, when we get to heaven, it ain't going to end. We won't have to say goodbyes. But we don't separate. Hey, there you go. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you next year. I'll see you next time. I'll see you at the next church meeting. No! We'll be together day and night. Can you imagine hanging out with me seven days in a row? <laughs> day and night? Here I'd get on the nerves. I would, but up here we won't get on one another's nerves. Praise the Lord. The sights, the scenes, the settings, the Savior is setting the stability. Oh, His sovereignty. <laughs> and the Bible says, as they begin to praise, those four and twenty elders get up. And they're taking crowns off the head. And they cast them at His feet. Now, I used to think this is joining my promise. I'm done. I'm going to lie to my brother Larry. <laughs> to cast on me, I thought, well, I don't want to be dangerous in anything. Yeah. I thought that meant cast. Not here. Here's the Lord on the sun. We're going to take our crowns off. And we're going to cast at his feet. I'm not, I don't think I'm even deserving to get a crown. I'm worthy to wear a crown. But if I get one, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to give it right back to you. Because 
the only way it's going to preach is going to listen. My holiness wouldn't even get you to the parking lot of this church. My righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says. If I get there, the only reason I'm a Lord is because of Him. That's the only reason. He paid the way. He paid the fare. He gave me my ticket. That's the only way I'm getting in. RSVP, 1987, 12.03 at night time by my bedside, made my reservation. Only reason I get to go is because He came and died for me. And He saved me. And He saved you. Let's stand again. Then be in the house of God. You pray for me, church, would you? I know you do. But as we continue on in Revelation, I don't understand everything. But preacher Sam, it's just hard to preach some of that. To think about the wrath of God. And Brother Jack, people in the last days will beg to die. Right. And they won't be able to. I mean, Brother Floyd, that would be like somebody getting on top of the Empire State Building. I guess now that's the tallest building in the world since the trace is not there. I don't know what the tallest building is now. But that would be like somebody jumping off the Empire State Building and landing and they'll survive. Back in the dying camp. I can't imagine. I'm telling you, in these last days, let's invite people to come to church with us. The lost people. Let's get them in. Let's get them in. We just want to love them and want to encourage them and try to give them Jesus. Amen? I'm trying to pray every day, Lord, help me be more sensitive to the lost sinner man and to show him Christ. And I want to show him love. Amen? Praise the Lord.